to the moment that you've all been waiting for. So let's have our microphone first in, in front. All right, in the side. And to our media friends, kindly line up if you have any questions to Katarina. All right, you, we may begin our Q&A portion. Break, break that. Right. And to our media friends, before you ask the question, kindly mention your media affiliation first. Thank you. Our legendary. Our legendary. The legendary. The first. Come on, the legendary. Hi, Katarina. By the way, I'm known for OPEDING worldwide. Okay. Welcome to the Philippines. For the end time. Okay, anyway, my first question is uh, as a candidate of Miss Asia Pacific International, what advocacy or platform would you like to bring to the state of this? Thank you. So I would like to bring the advocacy that I've been doing since I can remember, since I was five, which is helping the street children and the orphans here in the Philippines, but also just helping underprivileged children. Recently, and what I've been doing for several months now, has been talking to the students and the primary students and the intermediate students within Aotearoa in New Zealand about embracing their uniqueness about embracing the different qualities that they have within themselves like I did when I started my business. And so opening their eyes to maybe the possibility of using their diverse qualities to entrepreneurship. I started my business, Slime Princess, through my unique interest in slime. So I want to bring my focuses of allowing people to embrace what makes them them and use that to, to grow. A follow-up question, okay? Um, on this days and age of young generation like you, you're, you'll be 30, 18? I'm, I'm already 18. Oh, 18, okay. What do you think is the relevance of uh, pageant, European pageant, like New Asia Pacific? I think that is an excellent question. And it's something that I think about a lot in terms of why I joined this pageant. And I think that Miss Asia Pacific International highlights the message that you should embrace what makes you, you. And that's highly relevant to, to the youth today. I am a third generation migrant in New Zealand. My grandma migrated first and I think also internationally recognized. Like Every single person has their own ethnicity, their own cultures. And especially when you're young, within your teenage years, you're exploring more about yourself, you're exploring more about what makes you, you, your interests, your culture, and I think that Miss Asia Pacific International does an excellent job of highlighting to the youth that you should embrace, that you should indulge yourselves in your differences, because ultimately I think when we know who we are, we're able to empower others, we're able to grow as a society, we can make innovations, we can we can support each other, and I think that's the, the relevance of Miss Asia Pacific International today. Wow. Okay, and finally. Your family is here this afternoon for you, you know. So, what role did your family play for you as a family? Jenny, you know, so you What role did your family play? My, my family plays a pivotal role in, in this Miss Asia Pacific International journey. They are my support system. They are there constantly to, to support me. As you can see, they're here today. They're, they're in the background. They're part of my team. They're who I go to to talk to. They're who is always going to be there for my back. And so they're playing a pivotal role, supporting me through kind words, supporting me by being there for me. Yeah. Very happy to later. Best of luck. See you again. Yes. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Liel. I'm handling for the Philippines on Instagram. But for now, I'm for New Zealand. Wow! Yes! 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 Uh, favorite, our favorite oh, our favorite Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God
Hold on, hold on. Uh, our final uh, question. So, why should you be our next Miss Asia Pacific International? I think that's that's the end all be all question, is it not? And I think there's so many factors that go into choosing who the next Miss Asia Pacific International should be. But I think first and foremost, that person for Miss Asia Pacific International should be a person who is ready, a person that is ready to do the mahi. If you don't know what do the mahi is, in New Zealand we have a saying which is do the mahi, do the hard work. And so I think and I believe that I am ready to take on this hard work. I've been doing my work since since I can remember, whether this has been through charity work when I was five, by starting my own business, through my unique qualities at 11, to standing up for what I believe in when I got into a corporate battle with a trademark giant over my business. It's about standing up for what you believe in, and I believe that the organization, and you can see that I'm willing to do the mahi, I'm willing to stand up and spread the, my message, the focusy, that each and every person's unique qualities is something that should be celebrated. Their hues and their interests should be celebrated, and I'm here to do that work, and I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, not a question, but can you please introduce yourself, like, Something Something. Let's have an introduction on stage. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three. Katarina Weishman, 18 New Zealand! Woo! That's all, thank you. No problem. I don't mind. Would you mind? Adam! Next one. Next one. Hi, Katarina. Would you mind? I won't mind. Um, welcome to the Philippines and also to your family. Welcome again to the Philippines. My name is Franz Ivan and the budget media call me Mars Franz. So my question is, would it be okay if you could share to us your pageant experience? When do you start your pageant career? I started my pageant career about a year ago. And that was in October 2023 when I was doing Miss Philippines New Zealand. Prior to that point, I would like to say that I, I call myself at least an accidental beauty queen because at that point, I only wore heels twice in my life. I did a YouTube of how to walk in heels. Full transparency, I was not great, but I know that from that experience and now having my amazing mentors like Tito R and JV that I've grown so much from, from my previous Miss Philippines New Zealand and my Paresa, Pasarela is a hundred times better <laughs> and for my preparations I feel sometimes um, in the beauty pageant is what is it industry community um, and focuses have always come really easy to me because it's been a part of my day-to-day. -day. It's been a part of my growing up. And so I don't see that as necessarily pageant preparations. It's just something that I, I've always been doing. But in the context of the pageant, it's something that I'm able to amplify doing and ask for more support and gain and further reach through Miss Asia Pacific International. Yeah. And at the age of 18, um, you're now joining an international pageant. What are your expectations when it comes to the international pageant? I think that's a really good question. Coming into this international pageant, um, my expectations is just to grow and to show what New Zealand is all about. I have expectations of representing my country well and representing the communities because I know that I'm not just here representing myself, I'm here representing an entire country and I want to show the values that New Zealand holds on this stage. So my expectations are primarily for myself to do a good job at that. And since you said that you are a half Pinai and half New Zealander, is that correct? Uh, that you're so Kiwi, we, have, we like to call ourselves Kiwis. We have Kiwi birds, Kiwi fruit, and then Kiwi people. Kiwi birds. <laughs> Kiwi birds. Uh, what? 
specific values you have as a Pinay and as a Pinay that you will bring to the East Asia Pacific International Project? So I think the values of being a Pinay and a Kiwi sometimes overlap. If you um, heard me earlier, I said do the Mahi. I think that both Filipinos and Kiwis, we have this common interest and this common value of doing the mahi, of doing the hard work, whether this be for opportunities for ourselves or for our families. I think both of those, that quality stems from both being half Panay and also having my Kiwi relations. But individualized, I think other qualities would be, I love singing, as you can tell. And I think that's a quality that I use to spread joy, to spread my message to the youth. Because who doesn't like hearing a song that will empower them, a song that is meant for them, a message that is meant for them. And so I attribute that to my Filipina side. And then another different quality, I think, from, from New Zealand side is the fact that it's such a welcoming community. It's such a multicultural community. And so having that basis and understanding that we should accept each other's differences in this international world, in this multifaceted world, is something that I would definitely be bringing from my, my upbringing in New Zealand. Last question. As an 18 year old, are you ready? 100%. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, of course, we would like to be really appreciate your presence right now. Like, you look so stunning. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing an inch. <laughs> How will you or how did you prepare for this competition? So my preparations have been vigorous, I'd like to say. So I've every time I'm here in the Philippines as well, I do training with my my EH, my Philippine family and team. But also in New Zealand have been have been putting in the hours of doing that passarella of of making sure that I'm spreading my message in a way that the youth can receive it and just making sure that mentally I'm I'm 100% here and I'm 100% ready and able to do the learnings, the work to to become your next Miss Asia Pacific International. Yeah, we we will pray for you. And and of course, uh, we would like to know since you have half Filipina and Kiwi blood, do you have any plans incorporating with Filipina designers for your for the upcoming competition? Yes, 100%. So. Throughout my entire wardrobe for Miss Asia Pacific International is a range of Kiwi designers to Filipino designers. In fact, I might do a little name drop for you, but my finals and my preliminary gowns are actually by Mark von Garner. <laughs> oh, and also my net cost, sorry, is by many of sun. Oh. Hi, I'm Which segment of the competition are you most excited about? Sorry, able to repeat that? Which segment of the competition are you most excited about? Oh, I love this. So I think my favorite part of the whole competition or what I'm looking forward to from seeing from other candidates would be the national costume. And I think it's also the essence of Miss Asia Pacific International because you're really honoring where you're coming from. You're honoring your country and cultures that are there. And so I'm really excited to see what everybody has cooked up for their national costume. Yeah. Thank you. From the Kiwi Bird. So my question for you is I'm loving your talent. What do you love most about yourself? I think 
yourself is a makeup of your talents and and the things that make you you, right? So apart from singing, I think the thing that I love most about myself is my heart because your heart, you have the capability to love others, you have the capability of accepting others, and so I think my heart has been the biggest asset, not only for this pageant, but in life, in terms of accepting new learnings, and accepting new cultures, accepting new people. Follow question. Oh! oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know that you have um, a favorite interview. So my question for you is, uh, what's your uh, favorite uh, Filipino tradition. Oh, I've experienced so many, and for the first time sometimes, um, Filipino cultures and traditions. But like Santa Cruz, on it was my first year experiencing that. I think this earlier this year, which was it was so fabulous. But I think the things, the the traditions, at least maybe this is a tradition for myself and my family is. It's simply just making traditional Filipino food. I grew up making lumpia with my grandma, my lola in New Zealand, and so I think that's been my favorite thing because it's a tradition every single Christmas. Thank you so much, and that's all that we hear. Thank you. Uh, 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 would you mind? If I'm entering uh, an extra pageant college in 101, you look like 90s actress Vanessa Del Bianco. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Would you mind? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my first question, so how, how can you tell us the story or uh, process and how did you get uh, Were you appointed or did you join a national pageant in New Zealand? Were you to acquire the Miss Asia Pacific New Zealand pageant? So I joined National Pageant with Asia Pacific International in New Zealand for getting my pageant um, title. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, of course. Can you give us three interesting, fun, interesting that's, facts that's about three you that you want us to share with our audience right now? Of course. So one interesting fact about me is I started my own business called Slime Princess when I was 11 years old. And so if you don't know what slime is, it's like this really fun, sticky, gooey toy that kids like to play with. But it's also really good for, for people with disabilities as it's automotive. Um, when you play with it, you learn how to touch and how to feel. Um, and so I feel like that's a very fun fact because I was 11 in some night markets in a pink tutu, white t-shirt with my logo on it, a big, bright pink bow from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. selling my slimes by myself. I was like, family, go away, let me do this. <laughs> so I, one fun fact is I started that business. Another fun fact is I live on a lifestyle block in Auckland. So I like to dip, in, dip my, my finger into some farming. And my third fun fact would be on the farm, we actually have a range of pets, whether this is bunnies, dogs, but our favorite, and I think maybe your favorite's gonna become, is Madonna the alpaca. She's a domesticated alpaca. I saw her, we were driving home, and we saw the paddock, and we saw this white baby alpaca laying in the mud. And so it was rainy, she was stuck there, so we brought her into the house. I gave her a shower, and, and an actual shower, and then she's just become our pet ever since. Alright. What is the essence of winning this Miss Asia Pacific title for you? The essence is the Miss Asia Pacific International title is is not only title but it's a platform. It's a place where I can I can expand my reach of my focuses and allowing the youth to know that their uniqueness is something that should be celebrated and so I think the essence of winning it for me is to expand and have that message get a greater reach really. You have a beautiful singing voice. If there is any song that you would like to dedicate on your Miss Asia Pacific journey, what song would it be? Would you mind? <laughs> would I mind? Would you mind? There is this one song which is by Leia, I don't, I'm not sure if Leia Salonga wrote it, but it's a song that I grew up listening to her sing. Um, and just, I, I actually got to sing with Leia Salonga when I was eight. 
Um, but it's the journey so far. What a journey! Come on, what a journey! What a journey it has been. I love the song. should be shared. We have these ideas that are going to make the world a better place. And if it's especially for that reason, especially for empowering the youth, for the next generation to to have that sense of belonging so that they can do more, why not do it now? Would you consider your youth as an advantage in this year's competition? I think that being young definitely gives me some advantage for for connecting with younger people and this can it can go either way i think for miss asia pacific whether my youth is something that's advantageous or not but it is something that makes me me i'm currently 18 and i can't change that nor do i want to change that right this moment i'm going through life as it is yes and last question <laughs> and that's special. Uh, you're, you're the second Filipina to compete uh, to, to be in this year's batch. How do you see this in relation? How do you see this in relation to this whole thing? Like uh, you are Filipina and then there's Miss Philippines. Do you think you know uh, the, the organization will be generous enough to award you know probably two Filipinas in the top five? Year's competition. How do you plan to stand out in this year's competition? So I think that also bringing that being half Panay, that's just part of my cultural makeup. And I don't think that your culture defines your worth. I don't think it defines where your ranking should be at all. I think it 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 is the ranking that you are given is given because of what they see in your potential. So I don't think that's really a question in my mind. Great answer. Good luck. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Let's have one last media. Hello, welcome. So I'm from Badger. So we saw the video in the uh, years mission. Can you tell us uh, your experience with uh, kids? Yeah. So my experience with He Cares has been somewhat of a recent one. I, I discovered the organization back in January when I did a Help Me Help Them campaign. So I came and flew to the Philippines gaining support from the New Zealand community. And so I visited four different organizations including Scott Foundation, He Cares, Cribs Foundation, and Vision of Hope. And so those are all helping the street children and the orphans here in the Philippines from different ages and sometimes different backgrounds. For example, Cribs Foundation is all about helping the, the young girls who may have been abused, whether that is sexually or physically. And so He Cares is all about 
the difference with eCares and what I really love about it is it's inspiring and it's helping the youth educate themselves further. It's helping them go through through universities, through through primary school, getting that basic education. And so though my time with eCares has been short and knowing who they were um, only this year, it has been something that I hold really close to my heart. Oh, there's so many good things in the food. There's so much. Oh, actually, when we first entered the country, um, upon arrival, our first meal was actually Manga de Sao. We went straight for it. Um, but Lumpia is definitely one of my favorites because I just have so many fond memories of making it with my family and my grandma and my cousins and sharing that with, with Kiwis in New Zealand. So that is one of my favorites, but I think my other favorite would be, have to be Taho. And that's because I have memories of when I was younger coming to the Philippines. And before going into the office with my mom and my dad for their business trips, there would always be the Taho men outside the office. And it was my favorite treat. And every time I'm here, like, we have to wake up super early to catch the Taho men. He doesn't age. <laughs> Thank you. And I think we have one last person asking a question. Hi, Kat. We met uh, last Monday. So I am the VP of Marketing for Atlas uh, New Zealand and the head of the Philippines office. So would you mind if I share a little story about how we came up with the decision regarding... Uh, oh, you share? Yeah, share. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so here's what happened. We partnered up with Miss Asia Pacific New Zealand and three days before the coronation night, every morning the organizers call me, Hey Andrew, who will be our Miss Atlas New Zealand? So um, I'm a bit busy and then hey, can I do this uh, tomorrow? And then tomorrow comes, Hey Andrew, who's gonna be our Atlas New Zealand? And then I call my assistant and the whole team. I call them. Gather up some stats, let's see what they do. I need some research, I'll do my research on my own and then we'll discuss. Then we sat down in the office and it's like a tight competition, meaning the other competitor has a lot of likes, a lot of followers, right? Uh, a lot of like uh, Filipino friends who's like heart hearting the Instagram posts, did a lot of stuff for the social media and it's a tight squeeze and then question came up, are we going with the stats or are we going with the heart? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we chose eventually the heart. Because I did some research, I know that, uh, you know, you're doing your heart positing and here we are. So, the question for me is, now that you are the Apophis, Miss Apophis New Zealand, um, what is your bigger plan? promote our policy because in New Zealand that's our advocacy to reach out to as many people as we can and uh, like the children and well, well the promoting of prep is just a side by product but we wanted to reach out as many as people as we can to your help. So what's the plan? So I have been doing a series of help not help me help, I'm sorry. It's a different campaign. <laughs> I've been doing breakfast and entrepreneurship. So this has been a series of talks throughout Aotearoa, New Zealand, where I've been visiting primary schools and intermediate schools. And so I've been sharing the message about that they should embrace who they are, their unique qualities, and maybe open their eyes to entrepreneurship in that way. And I've been collaborating with Aqua Flask through those programs because they have been so pivotal and and allowing, like, hydration is very, very key. You need to be hydrated to learn, you need to be hydrated for all of that. So we've been giving some prizes of Aqua Flask and promoting you to the children as well. But I think in terms of reach, it's all about going to, going, like going to children and to schools because where you do your learning, you need to be hydrated to learn. Thank you. Our Aqua Flash. 
All right. Now, thank you to um, everyone with your insightful questions and engagement today. So it is truly heartwarming to see the support that you have for Katarina. And before we wrap up this segment, maybe Katarina, do you have any last words that you would like to share to our friends from the media? All right. All right. Just give them a moment to set their Here system. we go. All right. Any last words to our friends from the media? Yes. So I would like to say, first of all, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here. I would also like to say before we all leave that I know it's two people's birthdays in this room, and so I'd want to celebrate with you those birthdays. And we actually have some cakes to, to give you. So, oh, yeah. Let's have a yell. Oh, yeah. Let's have a yell on stage. Oh, yeah. As well as Sir Nolly. Oh, yeah. All right. 